What's going on everybody? Back at you with another episode of Antics Garage. Today we've got a beautiful C506 here and this C506 has an engine code and won't pass emissions. So we're going to tell you what's going on with it and how we're going to fix it. So the system in question here is the secondary air system. You can see one of the valves is here. This is a one-way valve. There's another one behind the intake back there and there's a main pump down there. The whole purpose of this system is to preheat the catalytic converters on a cold start and also on a cold start you're using a lot of extra fuel so their role is to inject air into the exhaust pre-cat so that way you can help burn off the rest of that fuel mixture and it's not gunking up your cats too much. But sometimes what happens is, is that the pump fails or one of these one-way valves becomes an either-way valve and then it throws an engine code, you won't pass emissions, can't drive the car. So there's a couple ways we're gonna start off with how to properly diagnose which area is wrong. Is it a pump or is it one of the valves? And then we'll show you how to fix it. So you can see here, just gotta remove one plastic cover and that gives you access to our secondary air pump, which is this guy right here, as well as this diaphragm right here, which will direct air to those valves. There's a couple different ways of doing diagnostics on this. We're going to show you the way that we feel comfortable doing, that we do it all the time. First, we're going to take and hardwire this pump before the car turns on. Just two wires, power and ground. We're going to take this clip off so we can see what the airflow is on this pump, make sure it's pumping air out. Then we're also going to plug it back up into this uh, motor with it hardwired together so it's running. We're going to apply vacuum here. The engine supplies vacuum to this pod. This pod in turn switches over to allow the airflow through. Well, we wanna make sure this pod is good, so we got a vacuum gauge. We're gonna apply vacuum to it with the pump hardwired and make sure that we got airflow going through and that's good. If that's all good, then we're gonna to go to putting jack up in the car, starting it up, see if the, like, the computer in the car actually turns the pump on, and then we're gonna start checking the valves out, making sure that they're not blow through valves instead of one-way valves. All right, and through this nice trapeze of wiring here, we're gonna be able to test our pump see Bill right there, you see we've got it hooked up there to the factory connector. And Bill's gonna go ahead and complete the circuit here. And we'll see what happens. You see that pump is turning on. Now that, that might sound healthy to you, but it's actually a little bit weak, especially when he's gonna, what he's gonna demonstrate here. Now we're gonna test this diaphragm right there. See, so pumps it up, opens up, and allows the air to go through. But when it comes through here, it's not very strong. And you gotta think it's also gotta open those two valves up there. Now that we checked the air pump, we know that we've got low flow. We checked the diaphragm, made sure that that opened up and operated the way it's supposed to. Now we both, we've got these checked out. We know that we have an issue with the air pump, that it's not blowing enough force in order to go through the valves. So now what we need to do is I'm gonna drop the car down. We're gonna throw Jack in the driver's seat, put it back up in the air start it up, make sure we get engine vacuum on this vacuum line that supplies to this diaphragm, make sure it's proper. If it's proper, then we're gonna go up top and then we're gonna disconnect the air tube that goes to the air pipes. So we've already taken care of the first half. Now we're gonna go to the second half. We're gonna disconnect that line. We're gonna take shop air, we're gonna blow it in, but we're also gonna have the scanner hooked up, the laptop hooked up to it and doing live readings when we start it to see if we can get an actual uh, change out of the O2 sensor. We're also gonna listen into that pipe because if we can hear exhaust going through it, it means the valves are stuck open. So it's, a, it's an either way valve then. Got vacuum, kill it. All right, so we know we got vacuum down to the pipe. We know the motor's blowing weak. We know the diaphragm works. So now we got a open up this airline that supplies the check valves, put shop air to it and hook the laptop up to it so we can actually see what the O2 sensors are doing. You got all that? All right, so we got the car running, we got everything set up, we got shop air supplied to that hose that I was telling you about. It's right here by the alternator, it's a two piece hose. Put a zip tie on it to get a better seal on the blow gun. Jack's gonna show you the laptop on bank one, sensor one, and bank two, sensor one. And with the car running right now, you should see the numbers up. They're, they're up a little high, not too bad. As soon as I blow the air into it, it should drop them down. Just to try to help you guys understand, 
this was where we turned the air on. And you can see how it fluctuates a little bit. We had it on, we didn't have it on. Right here, we turned it off. So we turned that air on like the pump was working. It drove the O2 sensors down. So we know that both sensor, O2 sensor upstreams are working the way they should. And right here where you see that spike go back up, that's where we let off the shop air. It took a couple seconds for it to balance out. And now here you see the oscillation of the O2 sensor. So by doing that, we show that the tubes are good. We show that the O2 sensors are reading the way they should and that they're, you know, they're not slow responding or anything like that, but they're actually responding to the air supply that we're putting in. And then now here is back. Now, Jack, go ahead and hit that airline again. And you'll watch right here at the end of this stream, all of a sudden the graph falls off and goes flat on both this row and that row, which, which shows the O2 sensors are sensing the air that we're putting in. Now you see them climb back up because obviously it goes the other way. That's what keeps the car in fuel control. It's constantly sampling the fuel and what the exhaust is doing. So we know the valves work this way. Now Bill's gonna take that zip tie off and we're gonna see if we have any exhaust gas coming back out of it. You can hear that. Hear that gurgling noise? Now see how it stopped? Now it came back. That means those valves are either way valves, so they're both stuck open or one is stuck open. We don't change just one, we change them both. The easy one's right here. The pain in the butt one is back underneath there, underneath on the back side of the intake. We gotta remove the intake off of it. We just had one of these in the other day. Same issue, but this is pretty much what you have to go through. It's not, it's a little bit of time intensive, but you have to make sure that your diagnosis is done properly and you check everything, because if you put a pump in it and stop there, Go, hey, the pump's bad. I got weak flow, but you didn't check the diaphragm. You didn't check to make sure you had engine vacuum going to it, and you didn't check the one-way valves. It's flowing into the exhaust, but this is telling us that the valve is stuck open and the exhaust is flowing back. That will also feed into that vacuum valve down there and, and degrade that. It'll also degrade the pump because that's pressure going back the other way. Alrighty, intake removal 101 on this LS here. First, you wanna take your boot off. Um, as far as your throttle body is concerned, bolt there, bolt down there, and one on the opposite side. There's also this plug here, that hose that you're gonna to wanna to undo. Under here though, you'll see, and you'll watch when I do this, we don't remove the throttle bodies completely. Um, there is a coolant line right here. If you pull that off, coolant will come out. Ask me how I know. Um, so <laughs> we're just gonna push this out of the way. Next, we're gonna go ahead. You're gonna to wanna to disconnect your injectors here. All you gotta do is just pop that and push up on it, it'll pull up these little clips here, and then these bolts here, and these back here, you're probably, you won't be able to get like a, uh, a long extension on it, so you're gonna need a uh, swivel socket um, to get these two on the back out. And there also is one fuel supply line here, and this here you'll disconnect. Now, once you get this intake up and moved forward, there's a couple lines on the back, a vacuum line and one sensor. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you unplug those, don't pull them, don't break them, and replacing them is not fun. off you can go ahead and see what we're working with here on the back of that intake is going to be this plug here for your map as well as uh, this vacuum line here now be real careful with these vacuum lines you know these cars are getting pretty old and they get brittle um, so just make sure you don't yank it or bend it the wrong way or twist it too much just you know pull it and wiggle it off it should come off but now you can see if you can see back there that is the other one-way valve right there now if you're really lucky and it's probably not going to be us but if you're really lucky you can get two big wrenches on here and you can actually remove this right there just disconnect the hose on the other end of it um but if not if, if it's not coming free which it most likely isn't um there's a bolt one bolt i think it's a 13 
way down here it's a little hard to get to and then the other two right here and this whole rail will come out as one unit now this one over here is much easier you should ideally be able to re replace that in line um, but if not you'll have to remove a couple things uh, to get that off now one other thing you'll see while we're in here um, took the intake off so we're going to put new gaskets on it we're also going to clean up this mating surface here to make sure it's good and also you'll see your knock sensors here now you'll notice they're pretty open but you see there's still dirt under here so stuff still does get under here moisture dirt and anything so a little bit of preventative maintenance just to make sure we don't get water buildup in these knock sensors because it's a big cup below this pad here um put a little bit of a uh, gasket right here around there just to kind of seal it up just to give it a little bit extra protection um, so that way we're not looking at having to take this intake off again to do knock sensors in the future also one more really quick point when you pull these um, <clears throat> injector plugs off this little blue weather strip half the time it's going to come out you're going to pull this out and the weather strip's going to be just sitting on the little pedestal there um, you want to make sure you don't lose that so what i always do when i pull these off is i'll pull the uh, weather strip off and make sure it gets pushed back down in there and that every single injector plug has the weather strip harness because you don't want that to be missing well i'm going to see if maybe i can get this loose right away probably not holy shit that's insane well, whoever tightened this back bolt back here didn't do a good job because this thing just slid right off of it. Yeah, to be completely honest, I think I might just pull it out anyway. So here's what it looks like on the bench. Here's your valve here. The reason why it was honestly just easier to take it out, sometimes with the paint on these, this is a one inch uh, <clears throat> nut here, if you want to call it that. But it's a little hard sometimes to get your wrench on it because of the paint buildup sometimes. And even when you do, there's so little room, you can only go like eh, that much at a time and then you're, it's tough. And sometimes these are typically really hard to get off. So um, we're gonna get our new valve on there um, as soon as we can get it. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the other valve off and then this car will be totally torn apart. And the very last part of disassembly here, we didn't actually show us uh, removing this, but it's actually, it's pretty easy. It's just uh, 10 mil there, 10 mil there, and uh, one up here. This one's a bit of a doozy to get to. Um, <clears throat> and then this is the pump. To remove this from this base, it's got these little rubber things there. You just kind of pop it out. And this is what is weak. So we need to replace this with a new pump. So that way we'll have a new pump, we'll have new valves, and this system will be functioning properly. Going back the other way with it now, it's actually really easy. Um, I recommend, uh, we tried to do, we put the bracket in first, and then we just put these little, little rubber things that are on each corner. There's three of them. You can kind of bend them in and this motor mounts perfectly. So we got everything all put back together there. We're gonna put this little undercover back on, and then we'll be up top to put the rest of it back together. While Jack's doing that, we got the motor disassembled here. Got the new motor in there. We like to take things apart and see what actually went wrong with them. So this is the little rubber boot. That's the motor that's on the inside. See all this garbage down here in the bottom? That's all the brush material from inside the motor. You can see it inside here. And the inside of this is just a little vein pump. So electronic motor spins these little wheels and that spins it and that's what generates the air and basically the motor's getting weak so that's why it ended up doing what it did and it wasn't blowing as hard. Replacing the uh, piping is really easy. The only thing I'll point out, just make sure that gasket down there um, on that little flange, make sure you've got that when you reinstall it. Sometimes they fall off when you pull this, uh, this line out. Um, so just make sure that's there, but just make sure you route it back the way it came and then I uh, should be able to get it back in pretty easy. And with this hose off, this other valve back here, you should be able to sneak behind there with a small ratchet and a uh, 13 and finally tighten that bolt up that's holding this uh, bracket arm on. And with that, we've got all our hoses back on the valves, so now this thing is ready to have its intake back. excuse the rain noise but you see we got our intake back on i didn't mention but always make sure new gaskets on your intakes new gaskets so now we're going to make sure 
if uh, all this work actually did something. All right, what we're gonna be looking at is these numbers right here. Bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor one. And what we're looking for is the pattern here. Now, as soon as that air pump kicks on, you'll see these numbers dropping severely. And then it, it'll start showing over here on the graph. That means that the secondary air is turning on. See, it stayed on for a little bit, came on, came off. It's dropping these numbers down low. That means that air pump is working the way it's supposed to. It's pumping the air in and it's keeping these numbers low. Now we'll give it a couple seconds here and you'll start to see that wave pattern over here. See them starting to come alive. See how they're way up where they're up in the eights and nines. That means the secondary air pump turned off, which was keeping this graph down low. Now it's back up. So we are confirmed fix. This brings us to the end of the secondary air system on these C5s, which is real common. Um, a lot of Corvette owners don't understand. Hopefully now you understand what the issue is, how to diagnose it, how to fix it, and how to confirm it once it is done to know that the problem is solved. Yep. So once again, we really hope you guys learned something. If you did, leave us a like, leave us a comment, tell us what you think. It's really important. It really means a lot to us uh, to be engaging with you in the comments and helping answer your question. Remember, we have tons more stuff coming out of Agents Garage, so please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there, it's free, you know you want to, and we promise you will be entertained. So as always, thank you so much for watching and your continued support, it means so much to us. All our social medias, Facebook and Instagram, are in the description, so please feel free to go check those out. We post some sneak peeks so you can kind of see what's coming up because it's a little convoluted exactly when the car comes in and when the video goes out so as always guys we really really hope you enjoyed watching and we hope you stay with us as we continue growing we'll see you next time